Good morning, everyone. So I wanted to show off my J. Buhner collection, but I didn't necessarily want to do a box rummage, mostly because he has so many cards that nobody's going to give two shits about. So I decided I would do a top 30 countdown. And I am going to get right into this. There will be zero foreplay. I'm just going to whip my bone out. We're going to start off with a few honorable mentions. These are some cards that I thoroughly enjoy, but they're pretty easy to come by, so they got left off the list, unfortunately. First up, I have the 1994 Pinnacle Museum Collection. Not only is the Dufex amazing on this, but the pose is great. I mean, it looks like he's using the sunglasses to protect himself from the shine on his own card. I have the 1997 New Pinnacle Artist Proof. They did them in three different colors. There were 125 reds, 50 blue, and 25 green. And there's the 1997 Pinnacle Artist Proof. Again, Dufex is just amazing, especially when it's done right. It captures the light better than anything. The 1994 Bowman's Best Refractor. It's one of the first high-end cards that I ever bought packs of. So it will forever have a fond spot in my heart. And a card that is worth a million bucks based on the eye test. But worth about a buck on the open market. I won't lie, like I genuinely think this 97 totally certified platinum blue looks better than the platinum gold obviously it doesn't sell for as much because this one was limited to 1999 whereas the gold was limited to 30 but i think it's just a much nicer looking card so let's get this countdown started and coming in at number 30 1999 Clear Brilliance Gold, serial number to 99. Someday I hope to upgrade that to the 24 karat gold. Number 29 is the 1996 Bowman's Best Atomic Refractor. These fell one in every 48 packs and were the first atomic design that they made. And number 28 is going to be three cards in one. They kind of go together. It is the 1998 Don Rust Signature Series Executive Proof Run. And I am going to display the red version of that. The reason for that is when they did these, the first 100 cards were the Century Marks. And they were serial numbered. And then cards 101 through 1100 were Millennium Marks. So you would have 1,000 copies of the Millennium Marks. And anything beyond that would be printed on the base red design. But not everybody signed their full allotment. In Jay Buhner's case, he signed 100 of these Century Marks and an additional 300 Millennium Mark. So there is no autographed base red Jay Buhner. So that's actually the only way to get one. Then at number 27, I've got the 1997 Topps Chrome Diamond Duos Refractor with my main PC, Ken Griffey Jr. on the back. One of the reasons I love that card so much is he honestly doesn't have a lot of insert cards. He tends to have parallels. And coming in at number 26 is the 1998 Leaf Fractal Matrix. This is the leather card, and it's the Y-axis. There were 50 different cards printed on leather, and they were a serial numbered out of 1,000. However, the Y-axis die-cut cards, the first 100 cards were on the die-cut which is kind of confusing. Donruss Leaf did that for a few years, and I think it kind of benefits the consumer 
because if you have a seller that's not up on their stuff, they can often misprice these, not realizing that this particular card is truly out of 100, and they will think it's out of 1,000. Kind of sucks for the seller, but hey, you know, for a buyer, save money wherever you can get it. And moving right along, at number 25 is the 1999 SPX Radiance, serial numbered out of 100. These are just really clean, nice looking cards. There's not a whole lot to say about them other than they look nice. At number 24, the signature number of my primary PC is the 2000 Black Diamond Reciprocal Cut Final Cut version. So numbered out of 100, this kind of sweet, shiny, die-cut beauty is kind of cool in that they actually swapped pictures for the reciprocal cut. So on the base black diamond, this would be the back of the card picture. And that little picture is actually the car, the picture on the front of the card. So, kind of cool. At number 23 is the 1997 Score Premier Club. This was kind of an interesting set in that it was released regionally with each box containing cards from that team. And only 10 teams were included, which unfortunately kind of means a lot of fans got left out on this release. And it is estimated that about 137 of these Premier Club parallels were made. Can I see that? I actually got mine for dirt cheap because a seller mislisted it as the Platinum version. And number 22 is two cards in one because I don't really, they just kind of go together. And I'm gonna have a few instances of that in this video. But they are the 2005 SP Legendary Cuts Legendary Lineage. The one on the left is the non-autographed patch version, but it is the Platinum Parallel, numbered one of one. It's kinda cool. And then this one is numbered out of 25, and it's the autographed patch version. And the reason I love this one is that sick-ass portion of the Compass Rose patch. That's just kind of a very, very cool card. And number 21 is the 1998 Ultra Platinum Medallion. Now, if you notice from the picture in the background, Jay is kind of photogenic when it comes to non-baseball stuff. And it's kind of the reason I love this card. 98 Ultra was really good about non-action poses being really cool. And I always loved this one with the family shot, got his kids, I'm hoping his wife. And this one is numbered 86 out of 100. There is a masterpiece, a one of one version of that. I have never seen it. I would totally love to own it, but I'm not really expecting to. At number 20 is the 2013 Panini America's Pastime Hitters Inc. Dual Autographed Booklet with Edgar Martinez. Jesus Christ, Panini. It's bad enough you don't have an MLB license so we don't get the jerseys having the logos and everything, but then you're gonna have a fucking mouthful like that, that's what she said. I mean, come on. At least make the cards easy to say. Sick card, though. The only thing that would have been better is if they had had Griffey on there and had it a triple autograph booklet, which they might have, and maybe I've just never seen it. I don't know. At number 19 is a card that you would almost think is intentionally placed at number 19. The 2001 Don Ross Elite Status. And the status parallels were numbered out of the player's jersey number. So kind of cool if you're a, say, a Jay Buhner fan, and it means you get a low-numbered but 
kind of attainable card. Probably sucks if your primary PC was rocking single digits. At number 18, a card that needs very little introduction, the 1993 Finest Refractor. If ever a card set changed the game, it was that one. It changed what the definition of premium was. It changed what a parallel could and should be. I mean, prior to that, the biggest parallel might be, what, Stadium Club's first day issues? I don't remember if Pinnacle's Artist Proof had been out yet. That one might have been 94, the first year for those. But other than that, I mean, you were looking at Tops Gold as what you thought about for a parallel. And the game was completely changed when Finest came out. At number 17, I have the 1997 Score Stand and Deliver Gold Foil with Red Lettering. These were a result of a promotion. The 90s loved their goddamn promotions. And you would end up sending in four cards from the Stand and Deliver set if your team won the World Series. Or if a team not pictured on the cards won it, you would have to get the four wild card cards and send those in. And your prize was the Stand and Deliver set printed on gold foil, the first 25 of which were printed with red lettering. Number 16 is the 1996 Topps Chrome Refractor. This was the first year for Topps Chrome, and in my opinion, the best year. The design was cool, the shine was great, and even the cool little dimples on the card just kind of gave it an added texture that cards today simply don't have. I mean, look at it, it's just sitting there, and it's catching the light in completely different ways, just hanging out. Very cool. Number 17, 